Welcome to Team Hotel TV Week 7 Predictions. I have a, a brand new uh, looking host. You can kind of lost some weight. Buddy, you've been in that gym hitting hard, right? Mm, yeah. Man, you like teenage, I've, been on, I've been on the trim, you know. You look way better. Had to slim down a little bit. You know, take some uh, some lighter meals. You look better than ever. I know that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Wow, that's definitely. amazing, yeah. man. Amazing it's transformation. Amazing. Let me ask you this. How your wife liking that transformation? Mm. <laughs> She like it, I guess. I don't know. I mean, yeah, all right. <laughs> she does like that I'm a lot slimmer and younger looking. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work. Yeah. So we're going to go right into the first week, uh, first 1 o'clock game, which is the Bengals versus the Seahawks. And I hear they're saying that Mikey's not going to be playing this week. Oh, snap. That's the first I, I've heard that. Uh, you know what? Uh, first of all, the, the Bengals. Uh, I think one of the most surprising things in the league right now is the Bengals have the fifth best defense in the league. That is amazing because they were the worst defense in the league. Now, if they can get their offense to even come close to matching what the defense is, they're going to be a playoff team in 2017. But it's too late this year. Uh, they're not going to be able to kind of put those pieces together quite yet, but it's a piece of a bigger puzzle that they are putting together. The Seahawks are just too good. They don't need Mikey this week. Uh, Mikey, take your vacation. It's fine. It uh, doesn't matter who quarterbacks uh, because you guys are a good team all around. And uh, I think uh, what's interesting here is the Seahawks are not going to lose, and they're going to they're gonna be 7-1 and one at the end of the season. Uh, now the Seahawks, Cowboys, and Packers are all going to be buying for 1-3. through three. There's nobody that's going to break that 1-3. through three. Uh, We'll break down the scenarios of what can happen a little bit later. But I had the Seahawks winning this with 37-6. Wow. wow. I mean, it's impressive how the Bengals got the top five defense in the league. But, I mean, the Seahawks, too, is look like ones. So at the end of the day, yeah, I don't think yeah, it's really going to be much of a difference when Mikey plays or he doesn't play. And I got the Seahawks winning this one 45-0. to zero. I don't think the Bengals are going to score because, again, their twos look like ones, and they're just going to run up the scoreboard on them. It's a lot like so how the Cowboys. Say, so, Leo, are you saying that if, if, if they get into the mercy rule selection, the, thing, the Seahawks should just have to take their, all their players off the field? All of them, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, let yeah. the Bengals yeah. score some touchdowns and then probably put their ones back in the game. Yeah. Right. I agree. All right, buddy, what you got? Well, I'm going to go on the Leo approach here, and I uh, I beg to differ on that one. I think the uh, – They got church facilities say that. Yeah, I know. I mean, we've been talking about production uh, in the back row back there. But uh, I beg to differ. I think the uh, Bengals showed more defense this week. I think a Cowboys coach went and made sure of that. So I think it's going to be a little closer than it looks. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking 28-12 wow. Seahawks. So I still think the Seahawks win, but the Bengals do surprise on defense with that top five. What so, about Dave coming back? You think that plays a factor? I think it plays a factor. I think he's a leader. Um, and then that, that'll be a, a change uh, to see him coming on a positive note this time around. So, yeah, that'll help out. It's pretty better. impressive for you to give the Seahawks 28 points after you was calling Mikey Basuda last week. I, that was that was, that was a combination. I was there. Guys. That was him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what it was? The, the losing weight factor kind of messed up his point. You know what's really impressive too how this the um, Seahawks defense only held the Raiders quarterback to seven points. Yeah, and prior amazing. to that he scored about wow. 100 points in two games. games in two games. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's, that is impressive. That is impressive. Yeah. That's impressive. Uh, that that uh, cover three defense they have back there with um, Mikey and Brandon. Brandon. So Brandon who? Brandon. I said Mikey and Brandon. Brandon. I didn't say Brandon. Brandon. They don't have a Brandon, do they? The only person I know is Tashin. Yeah. Shahi, Joey. Brandon, not oh, on the Seahawks. No, oh, Seahawks. Yeah. You think it's some other team. Brandon. Mm -hmm. My bad. I'm looking at the uh, Brandon on my team. Oh, okay. that's what you're possessing. All right, so let's go to that next 1 o'clock game. It's, it's a game of the week. It's the Panthers yeah. versus the Jets, and Chris got some special. Yeah, games. we're going to have uh, two games special of the week, and this is the first game of the week. And, and the reason being is because the Panthers and Jets, really the loser of this game, and the winner of this game is in the playoffs. The loser of this game very well could be knocked out altogether. Uh, the, the, what I found is that the, the wild card here is the Lions, and we'll talk about them in the next round. But uh, the Lions, if they can win, they can actually be in the playoffs and they can knock out both of these teams. Uh, and we'll, we'll break down that scenario uh, uh, soon. But uh, it, it's really interesting. Even though they have three wins, three wins is not necessarily going to be enough. If you have four wins, you're definitely in. You can get in with three wins, but there's a good chance that somebody with three wins is going to get knocked out. Uh, the, the Panthers are the quietest team in the league. I mean, it's, it's amazing to me that they're 11th on offense, but yet if they win out, if they find some way to beat the Jets and the Colts, they'll end up being fourth seed, which is incredible. 
or they could lose out and miss the playoffs altogether. So which Panthers are we going to see? I don't know. They seem to be getting better. It might be a little, little, too, little, too, little too late. I don't know. Maybe they're, they're peaking and they're going to get in and sneak and surprise. Uh, but I have them winning this week against the Jets 25-20. Let's do a little quote from Buddy over here. I bet it's a dipper. I might be getting a shirt too, now that I use the quote. And I just think that uh, the Jets are going to beat the Panthers. I mean, I just think that um, when it comes to quarterback play, the Jets have the better quarterback. And I think that he's going to make um, smarter decisions against them. He actually played well against us too and made a couple passes. And they just couldn't score in the goal line. They struggled. But I think against a, um, a Panthers offense that's 11, they're going to give them a bunch of opportunities to score points. The Jets are going to take advantage. And they'll win this one 35 to 27. I have to agree on the Leo on this one for the first time. I think uh, the, uh, the Panthers, they do look good on, on certain games, and then certain weeks you see that they are falling apart. Uh, but that was the first uh, half of the season. Uh, it looks like in the second half, they just started picking things up. They got the quarterback situation situated. And um, they looked really good against the Rams the last time I saw. And they uh, you know, did good on defense, and the offense was moving. So uh, we could get a good Panthers offense and defense this week. But the uh, Jets have been more consistent for me. Um, I thought you stopped uh, coaching, buddy. What do you mean? We yeah. uh, confusing. Well, he's been not sure. Sure. Yeah, I told you weight loss. No, no see, the weight loss comes from <coughs> <out, so laughs> yeah. being at practice Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. I got a lot of responsibilities, okay, okay. man. I got a lot of TVs that are going to help out. Um, but I, I got the Jets taking this game on a close one, uh, 20 to 18. Mm -hmm. um, so that's Leo and Buddy going with the Jets. And Chris, the lone wolf going with the Panthers. I think the Panthers are playing more soft. I and mean, if they're going to yeah. continue to play soft, they're going to be the team that gets knocked out. You know what yeah, they say? So you got soft coaches, you produce soft players. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. That is true. Mm. All right, we're going to go to the last at 2.30 game. We have the Lions versus the Rams. Well, I think without Moses, the Rams are pretty much the only thing they can do is be a spoiler at this point and get lucky. I think the Rams are, are, are pretty much done because of that. Um, now, the Lions, on the other hand, they got another one. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> it's amazing. They got another one. And, and this, this game right now is, is huge. Now, the Lions are in a very interesting situation because they got two wins, right? So if they can get one more win, right? And it ends up they can knock out the Raiders. If the Raiders lose out and the Lions win one more, they'll have the same record and they have the tiebreaker over them because they beat them week two, which is unbelievable, right? And uh, the Lions also, if they lose this week and the Jets lose this week, they face each other next week. If they beat the Jets then, they're in the Jets go home. So there's a lot of factors that could happen. There's, there's, we have some amazing football getting ready to happen in the next two weeks. There's so much. I mean. Basically, the top three are the only three that are solidified. Basically, four to nine, it could be anybody's game, and there's anything could happen. So it's it's amazing. I think I have the I have the Lions winning this one though, 27-25. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, the, the Rams have a lot of talent on their team, and it's, it's just sad to see the road that they're going mm -hmm. down. You know, if they would have found a way to you know gel as a team and even you know find a quarterback now that Moses is gone and moved out the city. You know, it's the script. It's, yeah, you know about what that. Do you <laughs> he went to re um, store his career in New Jersey. Playing handball? No, he plays flag like football ages um, um, 8 through 10. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to restore his career over there. But, yeah, I mean, without Moses, I mean, the Rams struggle this year. and They can't seem to get a win. And they're coming against the Lions team that, you know, is hungry. And now that they have all their players back, like I predicted last week, the Carlos will come back. And Aram and all those other guys, they're all coming back to play. And they're ready. They're hungry. They're trying to sit there and get another win. You know, that's their famous quote over there. Another one. Another what one. What kind of organization is that? Like, well, a player to quit and bring him back. And, and he's starting. Yeah. You know, if the player quits. Well, I'm pretty sure like, they handle their stuff at practice. You know, you know, they made them run like a thousand laps or something oh. like that. You know, they, they <clears> disciplined him. So, you know. Plus, they needed him to win if they wanted to make Was Ralphie's hair standing up at practice? Yeah. Always. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I was there. You know, Buddy and um, Ralphie got some beef going on. I seen them on the on a sideline on Saturdays, pushing each other a little bit. Me and Chris had to separate it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with Ryan. But it was going on with you and um, <laughs> Ralphie. He keep putting up dog pictures and Listen, he keep commenting on everything he do. I don't know. Something happened. He said I put something about people wrestling at a gym, and I saw the filter of him, you know, licking the screen, and it's like rubbing off because uh, Kid Pedro. On the lines, did the same thing. If you mm. check out his Instagram, it's a weird trend. He got the face filter thing going on with the dog licks. I don't know. I don't know if that's a thing that's going on with the lines over there, but they got 
get together. That's a little suspect. Yeah. I'm sorry. Who do you think? It's for the Lions win. I got the Lions winning this one, without a doubt. I think they're back. They're hungry. They're going to make the playoff this year. They'll be you know, a seven for AC, and I got the Lions winning this one, mm -hmm. 40 to exactly. to 12. I mean, they can't score that many points. All right. Sorry but, for the rain. Uh, but you know, um, which, how come I don't know what? That's not what. Oh, you get um, special privileges from your um, any league team in the league team. Okay. You should know. We, we got to go back. We should go to week one time. and see if he had that cup on week one. Let's see if that's true. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I got the Lions on, on in this game. I just think that they uh, they had a few weeks where they were stumbling on on themselves, and it was more of an emotional thing, and a, and, and there was lack of leadership amongst the players. You know, the coaches did as much as they could, but you know, as a, as a team, they had to get together. And I think this week, uh, they showed that. I think Carlos came back humble. I think a lot of the kids are starting to pick it up. We got to Juan over there, who's a fat cam chancellor. He's kind of like the vocal leader. And you know, you got Gio, the young buck, you know, he's doing his thing. And I just think we got all types of uh, dimensions on that team. Me. That you caught the fat bro. Well, you know, I just got to the names. Like, you that? know the players personally. Listen, I just been to one practice and I saw, you know, a few things in there. <laughs> trying to prove That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I like stealing players. But, but uh, you know, summer camp. I use summer camp. Summer camp is my bridge to take them. So what about this? Um, I seen Alex and you know um, the assistant coach of the Lions over there running the Lions organization. Mm -hmm. While Kevin was absent, it seemed that they played better as a team without their head coach there. What do you think about that? Then they're going to replace Kevin with Al? I think I think they're up to something. I think they're they're trying to open their own franchise. From what I've heard, um, Alex is trying to start like a, like a Pelicans or something like that, <laughs> a basketball team or something. I don't know, but uh, yeah, they got something going on. You know, they're, they're buddies and stuff like that. They've been friends for a long time around the block. Uh, but uh, I've never gave my prediction, so yeah, yeah, yeah. down a little bit. Yeah, that, so. uh, what'd you say? Forty to twelve. Forty to twelve. Yeah, like wow, so we got the Lions on a clean, clean sweep on that one. Ooh. So that's going to do it for the first half of Week 7's predictions, stay tuned to the second half. Lions.